Kids like myself who were born in the early 90s most likely grew up with the Sony PlayStation as their main video game console. By this year, 2024, we are approaching the 30th anniversary of the Sony PlayStation. Some of my favorite games on the console are also its most popular titles such as Metal Gear Solid, Crash Team Racing, Tekken 3, and many more. In this video, I will be covering one of my all-time favorite PlayStation games that you probably have never heard of. Introducing Panzer Bandit, a side-scrolling 2D beat-em-up game released in 1997 for the Sony PlayStation. The first time I experienced Panzer Bandit was in 4th grade back in 2002. A friend of mine at school told me that there is a really cool anime style beat-em-up game. He said something along the lines of, Hey, I've been playing this game called Panzer Bandit, like, a lot. It's kind of like Captain Commando, you know? I was a big Captain Commando fan back in the day and played that game religiously on the PlayStation. Knowing Panzer Bandit was something like Captain Commando, I had to give it a shot. I was fortunate enough to try out the game because my cousin had a copy of it. The game did not disappoint me whatsoever. Panzer Bandit became one of my all-time favorite PlayStation games. In fact, I actually considered this game as my top 3 beat-em-up games ever made. This is one of the classic 90s games that I always come back to until this day. To celebrate the upcoming 30th anniversary of the Sony PlayStation, let's take a deeper look at Panzer Bandit, the best PlayStation beat-em-up game that you have never heard of. In 1996, Sega released a beat-em-up game developed by Treasure called Guardian Heroes. Guardian Heroes is a Sega Saturn exclusive that not only became the console's best game, but is also considered to be one of the greatest beat-em-up games ever made. The game was able to apply the in-depth combat of a 2D fighting game and the character level progression of an RPG. A year after the release of Guardian Heroes, a similar game was released exclusively for the Sony PlayStation called Panzer Bandit. The game was developed by Philin Cafe and published by Bun Presto. As you can see from this gameplay, Panzer Bandit plays very similar to Guardian Heroes. There is a major reason why these two games are very identical and it all comes down to their development history. The lead designer of Panzer Bandit was Imaizumi Masatoshi from Philin Cafe. He took inspiration from Guardian Heroes to develop the game. Now, the lead designer for Guardian Heroes was Ukiyo Masaki. Before joining Treasure, Ukyo was an employee of Film Cafe and a colleague of Imaizumi. For Guardian Heroes, Ukyo took inspiration from two games that he developed together with Imaizumi during his time at Film Cafe. The two games were Matt Stalker, Full Metal Fourth, and Yu Yu Hakusho, Makyo Toitsuzen. Interesting enough, both games were released in 1994. In short, Panzer Bandit is a game that was inspired by Guardian Heroes, which was inspired by other games of the same developer studio as Panzer Bandit. Hence, both of these games are very identical to one another. The most common aspect that Panzer Bandit shared with Guardian Heroes is the gameplay. In most 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up games, you have a 3D playing field where you can move freely between the foreground and the background. In Panzer Bandit, you can only move in a strict 2D playing field. However, you can jump from the foreground to the background and vice versa. The game essentially has two different 2D plane fields. The double 2D plane field concept was something that Phil and Cafe applied in Yu Hakusho Makyo Toitsutsen for the Sega Mega Drive. Other games from different developers have applied this concept as well, such as SNK's Art of Fighting and Natsume's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie. In Guardian Heroes, however, the game has a triple 2D plane field instead of double. So you have the foreground, the midground, and the background. Unlike Guardian Heroes where characters have RPG-like progressions, Panzer Bandit does not have any. The game went for a more classic arcade side-scrolling beat-em-up approach. You simply pick a character and go through every stage, one by one, until you finish the game. This also means that Panzer Bandit doesn't have a branching path storyline like in Guardian Heroes. The game's story is very linear from start to finish. Some considered this as a negative, but I don't think this ruined the game. 
Although for sure, it's always nice to have more variety and replay value in a game. A lot of players always considered Panzer Bandit as the PlayStation's version of Guardian Heroes, for all the reasons I've mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, Panzer Bandit flew under a lot of people's radar, primarily due to the fact that the game was a Japanese exclusive. The game's main campaign is a story mode consists of 8 stages. You start the game with 4 playable characters. Ko, the main protagonist of the game. Kasumi, the ninja girl with a robot dog as her companion. Miu, the little girl riding a robot. And Ayn, the silent and stoic black cyborg. The first half of the story mode, you can select one of 4 stages. Once you have completed the first 4 stages, the main villain, Dr. Farad, will invade your headquarters, thus you are on your way to his base and defeat him. It's kinda like Mega Man where you are able to select any stages during the first half of the game. Then you are on your way to fight Dr. Wily once you are done with all of the stages. Worth mentioning, this is not the only time this game has homage to Mega Man. We will get to that later in this video. Let's talk about combat in this game. If you are familiar with the gameplay of Garden Heroes, then you are most likely to adapt easily with this game. You move straight in a 2D plane field, as I mentioned earlier. You can move left and right by pressing their respective buttons, jump by pressing up, and crouch by pressing down. You can jump from one plane field to another by pressing the L1 or R1 button. There are four main action buttons. X is light attack, square is medium attack, triangle is strong attack, and circle is projectile attack. Just like a 2D fighting game, you can perform combos with different combinations of light, medium, and strong attacks. Projectile attacks in most characters work as homing attacks and only connect whenever there is an enemy nearby. You can also do a special attack by pressing the L2 button. Now, you notice this pressure gauge on the left side of the health bar. This pressure gauge is your super meter. The more you beat up enemies, the more it fills up. When your pressure gauge is filled, you can perform a super by pressing the R2 button. I do like this unique gameplay system for both Panzer Bandit and Guardian Heroes. It's a good way to implement an in-depth combat mechanic of a fighting game while keeping the simplicity and high-speed action of an arcade beat-em-up game. There are unlockable characters in this game. You can unlock all of the 8 bosses by completing the story mode with all of the 4 default characters. The game has a co-op feature for story mode. You can only play up to two players. However, this does not mean the game has no four-player mode. Besides story mode, the game has a versus mode. There are three types of versus mode in this game. One-on-one, -on -one, team battle, and a four-player free-for-all. Team battle and free-for-all are the only modes where you can play up to four players. Talking about the gameplay in this video doesn't do enough justice for Panzer Bandit. This is one game that I highly recommend you to experience it for yourself. When you look at the game a bit deeper, you can tell that Panzer Bandit was heavily inspired by Mega Man. How was this game inspired by Mega Man? Well, let's take a look. You have the main hero Ko, a blue boy with a robot companion. You can select the first four missions early in the game, then you go on your way to the villain's lair to stop him. Your mentor is an elderly scientist who briefs the missions for you. The main villain, Dr. Farad, is an evil scientist with a robot army who used to be the colleague of your mentor. You fight all of the previous bosses in the final stage before fighting the final boss. Kasumi is the granddaughter of the mentor who also acts as his assistant. One of the villains, Jin, is an anti-version of the main hero, Ko. And possibly many more Mega Man influence in this game that I haven't mentioned or even noticed. I only noticed the Mega Man influence in Panzer Bandit rather recently. It actually made me appreciate the game a lot more. But let me tell you the one other aspect that never ceased to amaze me in this game. I can't get enough of Panzer Bandit music. The game's soundtracks are absolute bangers. If you don't believe me, how about you listen to these tracks yourself?
it's not just the in-game music that's amazing. Even the menu themes are amazing. As you have seen in the intro of this video, Panzer Bandit has a sweet 90s style anime opening called Kimono Subasa, which means Wings of Hope in Japanese. The composer for Panzer Bandit was Watanabe Kanta. He is not only a music composer, but also a video game programmer. There are not a lot of projects that he has done as a music composer. One of his most notable works was a Hentai. visual novel called Himitsu no Hanazono. For those of you who are asking why and how do I know this, I stumbled upon this fact while I was researching for this video. But then again, everyone has watched Hentai at least once at this point. Regardless, it still amazes me that a Hentai composer was able to create absolute bangers. I don't know, maybe I should watch more Hentai to find good music. Anyways, back to Watanabe Kanta. His most notable work as a video game programmer was Wario World for the Nintendo GameCube. I can never get enough of Panzer Bandit music. The game did a really good job in making memorable tunes. Outside of the gameplay, the music is the other reason why I keep coming back to this game, even after more than 20 years. The Sony PlayStation and the fifth console generation in general was an era where arcade-like games started to fade away in favor of longer, story-driven games. There are not a lot of classic arcade beat-em-up games for the system, yet because of this, Panzer Bandit was able to stand out amongst the genre. This is personally one of the best 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up games I have ever played. It is rather unfortunate that Panzer Bandit flew under the radar because it was a Japanese exclusive. However, with emulators readily available in our current day and age, I highly recommend anyone to try this out. It is a game that you shouldn't miss, especially if you are a fan of classic arcade beat-em-up games. So, that's it for this video discussion of Panzer Bandit. What are your thoughts on the game? Have you played Panzer Bandit before? Let me know in the comment section below. With that being said, this is me Profar. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give me a thumbs down. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, join the Profile Mokori Hunter X Discord server, I'll see you guys in the next video.